Good morning. What, what am I doing? It's 6.48 a.m. No, 6.40 a.m. on Monday, June 13th, 2016. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. Uh, I'm pretty foggy this morning. Um, feeling less sick, which is good. This is just ordinary run-of-the-mill. It's too early. Feeling tired, fogginess. You know. Uh, um, I was up too late watching the E3 Bethesda press conference. E3, if you are not hip to the video game scene, is a big uh, annual uh, thing, trade show for video games. Among other things, but largely video games is a big chunk of it. And all the various uh, major players do these press conferences where they talk about what's going to come out in the next year or so. Oops. It's very exciting. I've been following the E3 press coverage for years. In fact, I can tell you this because it's not part of uh, a password that I use anymore. But all the way back when I was in college, um, I had to come up with a uh, seemingly random pattern of letters and numbers as my password because it had very strict password rules. And part, one part of the password was E3 because uh, it was uh, something I figured I could I could remember. It, but it was I was aware of it even then. So. Uh, there, yesterday was just, <laughs> I was doing something, um, yesterday EA and Bethesda had their press conferences, which, you know, are okay, but it's really the, the big major players, Microsoft and Sony, when they do their press conferences that, uh, that's where usually like the most of the attention gets placed. So there was some interesting stuff, things that I'm looking forward to. Uh, there's been announcements for like uh, Mass Effect Andromeda and uh, 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 Dishonored 2, other things like that. Fallout 4 coming to VR on the HTC Vive next year, I guess. Really interested to see how that would work because obviously it would be exciting to be in that world in VR space. But one of the things that I've definitely discovered as I've played around more with VR is that the better experiences are the ones that are crafted for VR from like the ground up rather than the ones where they try to reverse apply it onto an existing game. So for example at least in the conventional version of Fallout 4, you're doing a lot of running around and jumping over stuff, um, which is not optimal for VR. That's the sort of thing that makes it easier for you to get uh, motion sick. Uh, and so I would love to be in that world, but I'm really interested to see if they've managed to solve that problem in some way. Uh, you know, it, I, I'm interested. Um, I am continuing to have fun with the Vive. Uh, for example, yesterday I played a game called Waltz of the Wizard. And it's not even really so much a game. I mean, it's free and it's kind of just a tech demo where you get basically just sort of like a wizard's workshop and spell ingredients and various magical things that you can just sort of play around with. And, uh, and it's just uh, fun. Like, you know, you pick up looks like just the hilt of a sword, but uh, when you pick it up, whoosh, whoosh, magic blade comes out, kind of like a lightsaber, but you know, not trademarked. Um, and then a thing starts shooting fruit at you, and you can whoosh, whoosh, cut the fruit out of the air. Um, and then, you know, you mix and match the various ingredients in your spell cauldron, and it makes uh, various other things. Um, for example, uh, it'll have a uh, levitate spell 
where now everything you touch becomes weightless and you can just sort of toss it around and see it floating around the room. It has all sorts of other miscellaneous little VR toys in there. There's a little crossbow and you can shoot various stuff in the room and different things will happen when you shoot them. Um, I think the coolest thing was something they called Conductor which basically just kind of gives you sort of an unfocused telekinesis where you know you cast the spell and then you have your your hands and you can go like and like everything in the room that's not nailed down goes you can wave it around it feels like you know a magician's apprentice from Fantasia or something pretty fun anyway though the thing with that experience is that you're not really moving around very much. You know, you you, ha you can walk around a little bit, but it's designed from the get- Oh. Excuse me. It's designed from the get-go to be, you, you have the limited amount of space there behind the workbench in this magician's workshop, where the not walking around too much is kind of part of the experience, because everything you need to do is just right there. You don't need to go anywhere. And so you feel very immersed in the environment and you can do lots of stuff, but you don't have to do like running and jumping and climbing over things, which is where the immersion can sometimes start to break down. So I'll be very interested to see um, how the Fallout 4 manages it. And supposedly they have demos, and so I would expect we start getting some hands-on impression uh, articles about it. Anyway, uh, I've got to go ahead and get ready for work, so I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for five more minutes.